Welcome to A Filmography of One, the show where we talk about good directors who only ever made one movie. And today we're getting a little more recent with 2009's Mary and Max. So, this is someone who's made a great feature film, honestly one I like more than Mystery Men or Carnival of Souls, that's really not that old. But it's been nine years, and based on what I can find, he has no plans to make another film any time in the near future. I mean, this is an era where we're constantly getting updates on what every single director is supposedly working on. If he were working on another movie, chances are we'd have heard about it by now. So, let's talk about Adam Elliott. Adam Benjamin Elliott, as he was credited in his earlier days, is a stop-motion animator who's made five short films and one feature-length movie since 1996. That's almost my entire life he's spent making animations with barely over two and a half hours of footage to show for it. Most YouTube animators have more animation than that, so I guess it's pretty clear why nine years on we haven't seen a second film from him. Adam Elliott was born with a sciological tremor, an involuntary muscle spasm in more common terms, that seems like it would be massively inconvenient to someone working in claymation. But Elliot seems to have incorporated it into his style. His animations all use very dull colors, often have a depressing sense of humor, deal extensively with various mental issues, and pull heavily from personal experience. You know, fun stuff. Before Mary and Max, Elliot worked on three animations, all three under ten minutes, called Uncle, Cousin, and Brother. They're rough, to say the least, but when you've got one guy doing all the animation, that'll happen. They're so personal, I have to wonder if these events actually happened to Elliot. All three would go on to be featured in The Animation Show, an hour and thirty minute collection of short animated features selected by Don Hertzfeld and Mike Judge in 2003. After these films, Elliot created a longer piece, a 30 minute short film called Harvey Crumpet. This would garner him a lot of critical acclaim and even a Best Animated Short Film Oscar. There was only one place for Elliot to go. Mary and Max was Elliot's feature length debut. It starred the late Philip Seymour Hoffman as Max, an American living in New York who suffers from Asperger's Syndrome, and Tony Collette as Mary, a precocious Australian girl. Mary becomes curious about how babies are born in America, so she picks an address at random out of an American phone book and asks the receiver, Max, about it. Soon Mary and Max become pen pals, and we join them through their lives and explore their thoughts and feelings over a long period of time. Like Elliot's shorts, the film is darkly comedic, Max has severe Asperger's syndrome, and it's based on a real-life pen pal Elliot had for many years. Which makes it odd to me that he included a part where Max gets angry at Mary for exploiting his life story. I'm gonna guess that's fiction. Among the rest of the cast are Eric Bana as Mary's crush Damien, the delightful Barry Humphreys as the narrator, and a handful of voice actors who are apparently big in Australia. Here's what one critic had to say of the film. Tonally, Mary and Max seems like a children's movie with a very simple color scheme and a narrator speaking over most of the film. This is completely at odds with what actually happens in the film, which depicts several unfortunate deaths, sexual references, and a myriad of mental health issues. It doesn't seem to do this as juxtaposition either, like, say, South Park does. Rather, it seems to just want to keep you in a comfortable place. It's very simple and easy to take in, like it's a children's show that grew up. That was me. I wrote that. And I'm far from the only person to praise this movie. It sits at a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes and is currently ranked 178 on the IMDb Top 250. This is a beloved movie, and it's not even 10 years old. So, with all that praise, you'd think the next Adam Elliott film would be right around the corner. After all, that was 2009, the same year as Fantastic Mr. Fox, and Wes Anderson has had time to make another stop-motion movie, plus a few live-action ones. But all Elliott's done since then is another short film. And I'll level with you. There's a chance I'm gonna get egg all over my face on this one. Uh, unlike Kinka Usher, Adam Elliott has not sworn off making films. Um, there's a good chance he'll make another film someday. <laughs> Here's the thing. According to Elliot himself, he's a bit of a perfectionist. It takes him a long time to get projects done. So I'm doing this video not on the basis that we will never see another full-length feature film from him, but rather, if we did, 
we're not very likely to see more than two or three. A couple of months ago, I was giving a talk to some children, and one of the kids asked me, how long does it take you to make a film, Mr. Elliot? And I said, well, they take about five years each. And he said, well, I've worked out you've only got four left. <laughs> and I, it was quite a shock, but I realized he was right. Uh, Which is really unfortunate. I'm not sure why anyone makes stop motion movies. Don't get me wrong, I love stop motion films, but they take so long to make and cost a lot of money, and no one goes to see them. Leica Animation has barely turned a profit, and they've made some of the best kids' films of the last 10 years. There wasn't a chance in hell of some indie Australian animator making money off a stop motion film in 2009. But now we're in the middle of a huge indie boom. I think this is due in part to the internet, and in part to big name studios getting less and less willing to take risks. But you can't deny in the last few years we've gotten hits out of a lot of small projects like Lady Bird, Moonlight, Three Billboards, Manchester by the Sea, and the list goes on. Mary and Max came out before this and made basically no money upon release. But I feel like if something like this came out today it'd be a massive hit. Partially because of the indie movie boom and partially because of the goodwill Elliot has built up over the last nine years. This episode's a little shorter than the other two, but... I don't know that there's that much else to say. I mean, the man takes a long time making movies. That and nothing else is holding him back. And I hope one day he does release another movie. But until then, Adam Elliott will have a filmography of one. <laughs>